Hey guys, sorry this video's come out a little late. Um, I was at the, uh, at a wedding for a family member, so making up for it. But today we're in actually a really cool spot in James where we saw the big butt last week where it's like, you know, but there's grace from God. But here's the last little, in this chapter where James kind of gives a little last, you know, there is grace, but don't, you know, with that grace, don't do this. And it's an issue that these people seem to have. And that issue is starting here in verse 11. It says, don't criticize one another. Brothers and sisters, anyone who defames or judges a fellow believer defames and judges the law. If you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver and judge who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? This is actually very important to remember, guys. With grace, with all of this, we need to not step on other people's toes in that sense. We need to not get upset and, and criticize other people. Now, this here, criticize, is an interesting word. It means to speak against someone or to criminate them. Not incriminate, but to criminate them. Make them see like a criminal. Now, why would a Christian do this to another Christian? Why, why would someone do this? This isn't criticizing like criticizing like a basketball player's form when they shoot the basketball. No, it's like making someone look bad for what they do. Why would a Christian do this? The sad fact is there's people out there that criminate other people, make them look bad so that they themselves can look good. It's unfortunate. But take in mind, James is writing to people who were willing to be teachers just for the fame. That their motives for the things that they were doing were bitter envy and selfish ambition. Like these people were having this issue of, I want to look better than everyone else and have all the esteem and be the best person here that everyone loves and thinks is amazing. And unfortunately, pretty much all of us want that. All humans want to be seen as something that's desirable and of high stature and good. But remember, the proud person is the one who can't receive God's grace and the one that God, you know, shuts down and shuts away, but instead gives grace to the humble person. Now, remember this, because take in mind, we have been talking about the proud person. That proud person is the person defaming people. But I want us to look at this real quick. It says if someone criticizes, right, and judges someone else and defames them, they're basically defaming the law and then therefore putting themselves as a judge. Now, no one wants an unrighteous judge at all, ever. If you're on a case, you want the judge to be as righteous as possible, especially if you did nothing wrong. If you did nothing wrong, you want this judge to be righteous. Therefore, they give you what is right and they don't, you know, put you away in jail for the rest of your life when you didn't do anything wrong. But take in mind, we are all human. Imagine, right? Imagine if you were on trial or not even that you were on trial. Imagine someone murdered your family and you were the lone survivor. And then that the guy who murdered your family goes to court and is on trial, and the judge is also a murderer. Someone who finds joy in murdering people and has done it for years. That unrighteous judge might look at this guy and go, you know what? I like murdering too. It's fun, isn't it? You're off the hook. You don't have to go to jail. That's unrighteous. And that would make you so angry and upset. Well, we are unrighteous judges when we try to take judgment into our own hands and be like, oh, you're an evil sinner. Look how horrible you are. Da, 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 da. Well, we're just as biased as a murderer 
towards another murderer, if a judge was a murderer, we'd ju be just as biased because we're a sinner talking about another sinner. It's like, oh, you're horrible. You, oh, you stole? You're evil. You're a thief. Oh, you killed someone? Well, that's not that bad because, I mean, I've done it before. So, and you see, the problem is with us being judges of the law, we don't judge correctly. We're unrighteous by nature. Now, that's the unfortunate sin side of ourselves. Now, thankfully, there is only one judge and one lawgiver, and that's Jesus, the one who also died for us. He is the one who can save or destroy. God has set up and is righteous, and he has set up his laws, which are righteous. Now, he gives grace, and he paid the debt, and fulfilled it in a righteous manner, that's why we can be saved through Jesus' grace, because he took, or Jesus' sacrifice, because he took our sin and took on our sin and the punishment of our sin and paid for it. So our sin's been paid for, therefore it's righteous. But the problem is, is we get in the way. We're the ones that when we jump into this and we try and make other people look bad, because, oh, you're a horrible sinner, look how bad that guy is, and try to make them look bad, all we're doing is just being a hypocrite because we're a sinner in that same sense. And in doing so, you're using selfish ambition and to try and gain stature through defaming this person. So, who are you to judge your neighbor, right? Think of that. You're no one. You're a sinner. Just like early in an earlier study I talked about, God deals with us individually. God deals with all of our sins personally and deals with our walk personally because I might have sins that some of you don't even, are they're not even tempted with, but some of you might be tempted with the same sins I deal with. But that's the point is we all deal with different sins. I can't call you out because I have my own sin that I deal with. And God deals with us individually. But instead, we as Christians are called to edify one another. First the Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up as you are already doing. We are called to be there for one another, not to tear each other down and be like, you're a horrible sinner, but instead go, oh, dude, I'm sorry you fell into that sin. What can I do to help you? How can I help you? You know, love God. Hey, there's this Bible verse that talks about what you're dealing with. That is what we're called to do to be that example, to be the one edifying each other and lifting one another up. So, not judging, and, or now, what judging, not judging and criticizing doesn't mean. I know that's confusing, but think of it this way. It doesn't mean that you're never to call out another Christian on their sin. Some people take this to the extreme and say, oh, I, can, I can't say that they're a sinner because I'm a horrible sinner too. Like, no, yeah, keep, keep murdering people. It's okay. Yeah, keep stabbing my dad. It's fine. I don't care. Well, no, you call people out on your sin. Matthew 18, verse 15 through 20 talks about how to confront another Christian who sinned against you. And key point is, is do it privately. And it continues on and talking about if they don't, see their sin or acknowledge their sin, what to do from there on. There's also First Gal or Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 says, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in, a, in the spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. The point is, we are supposed to lovingly point out people's sin and not to point it out so that that person looks bad and we look good, but instead to use love and edify them and build them up and say, Hey man, I noticed you were sinning here. And this is what God calls us to do, you know, to not do that sin. Can I pray for you? Can I be there for you? So remember guys, stop judging others to make yourself look good. But instead, if someone is sinning, try and help them and point them back to Jesus. And be careful of yourself. You can fall into temptation too. Look at the end of Galatians 6. So, guys, take care, stay safe, and God bless.